Kate Word and welcome again to my channel here at Kate Word Art. You'll see that I love mixed media, texture, hard edges, geometry, collage, painting in layers, making my own papers with my jelly plate, and today I'm printmaking on my new 16 by 20 jelly plate. So stay tuned. Hi everyone, thanks for giving me your time here on YouTube. Today I've used some Mylar to cut new stencils, some new shapes. And actually uh, these are what I would consider to be masks since they cover these larger areas on my plate. And here I'm using some Thalo Blue. Uh, across the bottom, smoothing the paint with my brayer. Uh, you'll see me adding some Amsterdam turquoise green across the middle and cerulean blue at the top. There I go with that band in the middle again. That's okay. You might notice my new setup for my print bed, y'all. These are actually two adjustable T-square measuring tools that are typically used for drywall installation. And instead of the plastic under my plate, I have canvas on the table and a piece of 24 by 36 inch quarter inch plexiglass for my gel plate to rest on. So I'm hoping this new setup will help me with my registration mishaps. Maybe they'll be fewer and far between. Right now I'm really liking it because it's clean and I, I have everything situated the way that I want it. I'm left-handed so most of my tools are on the left and my paints are on the right, lighting on each side and in front of me, and my, my camera at the top. So I'm really hoping that this setup is a much better viewing for you. This print that I am getting ready to place on the plate, I apologize that I did not show it to you before I put it down. It is actually one of my early prints and you could probably, if you really are interested in seeing what it looked like before, it's uh, video number nine, somewhere along about 16 minutes or 16 and a half minutes into that video. Uh, it's the the print where I use pinks that I don't normally use. <laughs> but I, I like the way it turns out because I, I just really like it. It's, I like the way that these masks turned out. Um, I have really two sets that I've done. These have a little bit more of a square-ish uh, linear quality. The others, you'll see them later uh, in this video, have a more circular, round uh, quality to them. But they're still, both, both sets are large. And you may be curious about the numbers that you might see on them because I did label them as I cut them so that they could fit together uh, in certain arrangements that I might want to place them in and uh, so I can I can explain those to you in a little bit 
I'm trying to keep everything clean, wiping all my edges down, just really trying to watch about my paint. And this print, when I originally did it, it has two layers on it already, but I wasn't being very careful about the registration. I was still learning about registration and my method was not real accurate. So you'll see that this is, def this is also a misregistered print. And we'll wait about five minutes. Okay, let's see what this looks like. See, I like the interaction of the warm and the cool colors and that blue laying over. I, I really kind of like the, the wonky linear marks that, that my new masks create. And you'll, you'll see it even more so when we add the next layer. And now I want to capture this ghost print. Now I realize there's not much of a, a ghost image there except on the, on the bottom portion. But I'm going to use this Naples Yellows Light on the whole thing. Uh, that's a, an Amsterdam paint color. And um, I think you'll see when I pull this uh, ghost print that it's, it's very subtle, but it's still effective. And uh, I just like those shapes. That, that's what I was really wanting to retrieve. I forget to show you this one too. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, actually, this was a clean sheet of Somerset paper. <laughs> there was nothing to show you. When I pulled this ghost print, it was on a clean sheet of, of Somerset paper. It's re that's real subtle. And uh, for some reason, as I'm bringing these close to the camera to give you a, a close-up view. Uh, the color is reading kind of yellowish and uh, maybe it's the warmth of the, of the lights that are that I'm using. But anyway, it's not quite as warm as it's reading there.
so here are here's the second set of mylar masks that I cut I got the mylar from Amazon and they uh, the sheets measure 12 by 12 and as I was cutting them I I tried to organize them in a way that I could remember uh, you'll see T for top B for bottom, L for left, M for middle, and R for right. So when I wash them, hopefully that Sharpie marker will last for a little while. But as I wash them, uh, I can kind of keep them organized into the set, if you will, um, so that I can keep this shape. I want to repeat these these uh, shapes or aligns the linear movement, the wonky the wonkiness. <laughs> I don't know if that's a word. I'm sure it's not, but uh, in in southern it is. We can call it the Kadish Bible. <laughs> anyway, the Kadish Dictionary. Anyway, um, I've used. I think it's either metallic black or uh, Mars black and then the middle color is phthalo green and uh, that might not be Mars black that might be yeah it is it's Mars black I was thinking it was more of a blue but it's not This is our print that we worked on before. It's been air dried and I'm applying another, I think this is like layer number four. And we'll just see what kind of transfer we get. I think we get a good one. So here's the pull. And I think it's a good transfer. I like the the uh, whimsical let's let's just say maybe the shapes are a little whimsical you know even if this print is misregistered and I actually I have a plan for that misregistration um, and and for getting paint on the outer edges of my my paper I, I have a plan Okay, in a previous uh, video I may have talked about mounting my my print on a wooden cradle and somebody asked me what is that and how would I do that and so forth so I thought I would just show you 
what I did was I cut my print uh, out of the paper uh, so and uh, of course I kept the the t the window if you will um, I've tried using a blade the, the paint is dry and I've tried using a blade to scrape it but it just doesn't work without shaving too much of the paper and you can you can see where I've tried to shave it and correct that but I'm showing you products here that that I'm using for um, mounting the the work to this cradle panel and you're going to need to use two coats of the GAC 100 or, or gloss medium and the reason that you want to do that is because you don't want the oil from the wood to leach through and to stain your print um, it might not happen but you, you know I just don't want to I, I want to do everything I can to guard against something like that this is Liquitex um, it's a super heavy matte uh, gel and I've listed it in the in the supplies that you would need to, to do this sort of thing this is a 7 8 uh, 16 by 20 cradle panel that I got from uh, Dick Blick and I'm not sure it might be the Dick Blick brand of panel they're 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 a little bit less expensive than some of the others that I've purchased before but I'm spreading the gel uh, as evenly as possible I, I, I'm generous with that adhesive but I'm I'm really trying to spread it and distribute it evenly and then I'm going to use that other little tool the other little tool uh, that has the serrated edges on it that is something that I got in the art resin kit when I was doing resin a lot uh, it's it's used for spreading your resin and I just have kept those and it's been really good for this sort of chore and when you cut your print out of the out, out of the paper you want to leave uh, about a half inch around um, and and there are all kinds of things that I did to I, I placed my cradle panel over the the perimeters of the print so that I could make sure that I got the and captured the image that I wanted when I cut it out and then you're going to want to turn up turn the print over and and uh, put the cradle panel down on the back of the print you want you're going to want to make a pencil line all the way around that cradle panel so that when you place your print face down and you and you put this glue glued piece of wood down on top of it that way you'll have a guide for how you're placing your print and it's you have to work really kind of fast so that you know if there's if you need to adjust it or shift it in any way that you'll have you only have a short window of time there and you'll see that I had to adjust mine and uh, and I, I was glad that I, I had just a little bit of time to do that. But then you're going to take a razor blade and cut around it. <laughs> and uh, but you're you're going to have to wait until the prints dry before you do that. Obviously, it needs to dry overnight. But here here's the you see faintly the line that I drew on the back, and I'm going to. I'm going to put my adhesive side down and fix it, fix my cradle panel to the back of the print. And I didn't quite get it right, so here I'm adjusting for that. And uh, there's a little bit of play there that I could squoosh it around and adjust it, but, and I did. I was able to do that.
then I'm going to take my Baron and I'm going to start. You can do this with a brayer too. Um, I'm going to start pressing from the middle, going both directions, and then turn it over and start in the middle again. And this this is for getting any kind of bubble at the adhesive if it's if there's a clump anywhere or if you got just a little bit more in one place than another uh, when you were distributing it this this helps to get any bubbles out so that you have a really good adhesion your print to the cradle board and this is why it's really important to spread that adhesive very evenly I also when I'm putting the glue down I, I want to make sure that I have product uh, on the edges and the corners you uh, you'll see me checking here the edges and the corners and right here I'm just wiping a, away any of the uh, adhesive that got squished out that's just a, a, a baby wipe that I'm using there to wipe down the side of the cradle panel And I think this is just a piece of freezer wrap. Yeah, freezer wrap. You can use parchment. You can use glassine, but uh, I, I use it to protect the surface of the print because I'm going to lay it face down, and I'm just going to put some heavy books on it overnight. So you just want to protect the the surface of the print. There, I'm I'm checking again my edges and my corners to make sure I have some good adhesion there. Here comes the Lincoln Library. Two volumes come in real handy. And basically you're just going to evenly distribute your books all on the, the edges and the middle of the cradle panel. Just um, make sure you, you know, have it equally weighted and, and just leave it overnight. And we'll check it in the morning. So now comes a tricky part. We're going to use an X-Acto knife. And hopefully you have a fresher blade than I did. I had used my blade one time, just one time. And uh, anyway, you'll see I had to stop and put a fresh blade in. But um, so. I'm left-handed and I, I've just learned that for myself I, I start on this left side and keep turning it around until I get all four sides cut and 
you want to cut as close as you can to the cradle panel and it helps if you can do your cut in one swoop now here I had a cardboard and I should have had a self-healing cutting mat and I I have one but I was too lazy to come inside and get it but this this helps if you do this in one one stroke you might have to hold your breath or take an inhale and and then exhale it as you're cut, making your cut I know there are all kinds of um, tips for how to make that cut and my cut wasn't as smooth as I would like to have been because I didn't have a fresh blade in that exacto knife so I uh, here I'm using a, a sanding block and I'm just very lightly from the top edge down moving down I'm very lightly sanding the edge to take off any you know any rough spots I'm gonna paint those little edges later but uh, that'll take care of that but anyway you'll see I need to change that blade and that's what I'm getting ready to do hopefully I don't cut myself <laughs> I did not cut myself but after a fresh blade, the, the cutting was much easier and, I, and much cleaner. I had very little sanding to do. And one of the things I, I failed to, I think I wasn't very clear about is that product, the GAC 100, is for sealing your wood before you start. And you need to let each coat dry completely. Uh, I have even let mine dry overnight each between each coat but it's it's very important but you can also use gloss medium if you don't have the GAC 100 and GAC 100 is a golden product and I have to say that this size the 16 by 20 was pretty easy for me to manage I have done some larger pieces of paper uh, painting and uh, it wasn't quite as easy. The, I think the largest was like a 30 by 36. And it was also Yupo paper. That may have been part of my difficulty. I wasn't as happy with it as I am this piece. If you do large pieces mounted to cradle panel, I think you might need a second person to help you. But I'm going to paint around the edges and I, I probably will select a color that will go all the way around. It might be black. It might be the phthalo green. I don't know. It could be the ochre or the pink. I haven't chosen my color yet, but I think it'll definitely blend with, um, with my painting and help me with the misregistration that I have cut away. And my floater frames are in transit. I'm excited. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. And if you have any questions, please, in the comments, or you can private message me, send me an email. My email address is in my about information. And again, I want to thank all of you who are new subscribers. I really appreciate And I appreciate your comments, too. Thank you so much. Go make some art. <laughs>